In this video, I will show you more advanced features of Blitz report parameters. For example, how to use the different anchor styles, how to use dynamic SQL, how to use the different list of value styles, how to use matching values and dynamic default values. So let's start with our test report. Let's go to the Blitz report form. And here we have our AP test report. And let's go to the setup screen. So here we have a query selecting data from the AP suppliers table. So two columns from the AP suppliers table and all the columns from the AP invoices. And from the last session, we already have parameters on this parameters tab. So we have a parameter for the supplier name, supplier number, invoice date from and to, and also one for the creation date. And these parameters, they are typically the parameter name and the where clause restriction. And they reference an anchor here. And the anchor means a placeholder in the SQL query. So here in the SQL query, you see one equals one. And this anchor here references the anchor in the SQL query. And what happens then at runtime is that if the user populates a value for this optional supplier name parameter in this case, then it starts restricting the data by inserting the where clause here directly before this one equals one anchor. And the different types of anchor, so we can have not just this one equals one anchor style, we can also have lexicals and direct binds. And these different anchor types, they are described in the developer guide on our web page. So if you go to the developer guide and then into the section 1.2, anchors and binds, you see here the different anchor styles. So we have anchors, which are one equals one, two equals two, and so on. And those are typically in the where clause. And these are the ones that we use most of the time by default. But then we can also have lexicals and lexicals, they work in the same way as with other reporting tools and also Oracle standard reports. So that if you use a lexical, you can start replacing a whole section of the SQL text with the specific SQL text that you would like to have. And then we have the direct bind style. So that can also be used. We can also use binds directly in the SQL query. So here's also a table which shows the differences. So let me give an example here. So let's just run a report first for supplier name parameter. So right now when, so we have already a default value for the creation date from, when we run it like this, with the creation date value from populated, the SQL query, which we see on the parameters tab here in the SQL section has the where clause for the creation date from automatically inserted. And we reference the anchor one equals one because the Blitz report needs to know in which position it needs to insert this, this SQL query text. So it starts inserting it directly before the one equals one. So you can have, if you have a large query, let's say with many union alls, you might need different where clause restrictions for the same parameter sometimes even in different positions of the SQL query. And then you could have different anchors, one equals one or two equals two or five equals five, for example, and then the where clause would be inserted into different positions. Let me give you an example. So now this is very simple, but let's just enter a new, let's say six equals six anchor. And now let's reference that anchor here for the supplier number parameter. And then what happens is as soon as we populate as a user, the supplier number parameter, let's choose this one, for example, G plastics. Let's hope that they have invoices from 2022. Probably not. Let's see. Oh yeah, there are even invoices. So let's go to the parameters and look at the where clause. And you see now that the creation date where clause is inserted before this one equals one anchor. Whereas the supplier number where clause is inserted before the six equals six anchor here. So that's how these anchors are used. So you can have the different SQL text in different positions of the SQL query. So that's the, the one equals one anchor style. That's the first one here, this one. But then we also have the possibility to use lexicals. So we can have a lexical, which is, let me show that one. So you could have a lexical, let's say in a where clause here, where clause, and then you could do the same. So you could, for example, say if the user populates, let's say the supplier name, I would like to insert 
this where clause. But now, because you see this one does not have the end keyword and the line feed at the end, so let's add also this one and the line feed as well. So that's the main difference. So we could also do it like this. And when we insert, let's say we enter a supplier name, Shream Healthcare, this where clause is injected into the SQL query. Okay, let's go to the SQL query again. You see this, uh, where is it? Ah, here. Here's the where clause. So this where clause and is inserted into the SQL query at the position of the lexical. So that can also be used. Or you could, for example, have, um, usually we don't use the lexicals in a where clause because the benefit of using the one equals one anchor compared to these lexicals is that we don't need to think about this adding the end keyword to the end of the restriction because sometimes end is at the beginning, sometimes at the end, and then you need to always think about to do it right. And if you use one equals one, then it just works because our code automatically inserts end and a line feed at the end of the, the secret text. So yeah, we usually use these lexicals for columns. So let's assume you would like to do the SQL dynamic and you would like to have, oh, here's Toad. You would like to have additional columns in your SQL query, let's say for the vendor. And you should add an additional parameter called, oh no, this is not the right way. Let me first add the lexical. So let's say we would like to have additional columns for the supplier in this position. So let's say supplier columns. So this is a placeholder. And let me take out this one. And now we would like to have uh, the this one dynamic so the user can choose if they would like to see these additional additional columns here or not so if they just run it like let me just reference this one again if they run it like this what happens at runtime the lexical is just removed and the SQL query is exactly same as before so you see here, the lexical is no longer there. So it's uh, exactly the same query as before. But now if we want to do it dynamic, we could, for example, say we create an additional parameter, show supplier details. And then we reference that lexical, for example, this one. And here we enter the SQL text. So I'm now, I'm not, uh, I don't know all the column names all the top of my head, so I use Toad for that. Next star uh, from AP suppliers, and then I want the column name APS. Let's say the vendor type lookup code, and let's say the pay group lookup code as an example, and what else? Payment message lookup code. Okay, let's say we would like to see these additional three columns. Then we can enter these in the SQL text for that lexical. And then we need to have a, a possibility for the user to decide if they want to see this parameter. So basically what happens is regardless what value they place in here, it would insert the, the SQL text then. So we could, for example, enter anything or usually, for example, something like yes or why, and then the SQL text is inserted. And that means now, you see now we have, all of a sudden we have these additional columns. Where are the columns? Uh, here. Vendor type lookup code. And now we only see the vendor type lookup code probably because we have a template. Let's go to the template. Yes, we have created a template before. So let me take out the template and you see all of them. Because the template only shows specific columns and that was created in the session before. And that would not show everything. So now we have these three additional columns. And if the user leaves the value blank for that uh, parameter, so let's say like this, then it would not have these additional columns. So that way you can modify the SQL dynamically. And we use that method, for example, for reports like our AP invoice and lines report, where you can decide if you would like to run a report on invoice level, on header level, on lines level, or on distribution level. And then depending on which uh, the 
parameter setting the users enters, they, it shows the additional information. And now we could make it nicer. So here shows supplier details. Right now, I, I don't have a list of value here because the type is just character. So usually what we do is for these um, yes, no switches, we don't choose the ORCID standard list of value. We have a custom list of value called just yes. This one here, you see it's used very often, 371 times. And that one only has two values, blank and nothing. So basically the SQL query only has one value, as you see here. So this is just selecting one value, yes, from dual. And the benefit of having just one value in there is that the users, they can just double click and then it's like a checkbox. So they, it saves them additional time typing. So that's very convenient. You see then if they switch it on by double click, then it shows the values, otherwise it's blank. And then it doesn't show it. So that's the the lexical. And then we can also have the the third anchor type that is used traditionally in reporting tools is the direct bind. So we can also use a bind directly in the SQL query and reference it here. So for example, instead of using here for the supplier name, instead of having the where clause here, we could have it directly in the SQL query here. Let's say like this, or let's place it at the end. Or maybe, maybe in here. And then we would call it, uh, let's use a different bind name, vendor name two. So we could do it like this. And now uh, we need to reference that bind. So here on the parameters tab, let me, instead of referencing it like this, let me reference now instead of the anchor one equals one, let me reference this bind directly here like that. So this would also work. 3M. Let's see if we have invoices since 2022. Okay, that also works. But the downside of this approach is, and that's why we don't use it that much, is that if you want to have an optional parameter like this, if you leave it blank, now there's no data retrieved because it's uh, there's an equal sign and equal null is not a true condition. And for that reason, we don't see any data. For that reason, developers often use an NVL construct. So they do something like this. NVL like this. And then it also works if the user leaves the value blank. But the problem with this approach is that due to the NVL uh, function here, the query cannot use an index on the vendor name anymore. So for the supplier data, it's probably okay because it's small enough. But if you have a large transaction data set, then this NVL is not good. For that reason, we don't use this direct bind approach for optional parameters. We use this anchor one equals one, and then we only in inject the where clause dynamically if the user really populates a parameter. And if, if they don't uh, enter a parameter value, then we just don't enter the where clause part. So that works better performance wise. So let me remove this again. And instead of that one, let me reference one equals one, but now we need to back close again, APS vendor name equals vendor name. And this name here, by the way, is it can be any name. So you could also call it bind one. The only restriction is that you can only have the bind used in one parameter. So it's not allowed to use it in two different parameters. So this one would not be allowed because then there could be conflict. So if you populate both of them at the same time, the database uses then the same value for both of them that won't work. So you could do it like this, but not use exactly the same bind variable name. Okay, so that's about these parameters. So these lexicals, they can also be more dynamic. Uh, for example, let me show an example in between we have a report or standard report AP suppliers. And that one has some more examples. So it also uses here this one equals one anchor style with the where clause and the bind inside that where clause. And then it has additional parameters. For example, here there's a parameter show contacts and the user can decide. And here it's again, the yes list of values. So the user can decide if they want to see the contact information or not. So by default, it's off. And if they double click, then it puts it, 
uh, turn, switches is on basically. And the difference is if you look in the SQL query, let's see, let's make it bigger. And where is the lexical for the contacts? Uh, it's here. So it's first, there's one for the contacts column. So here are the additional columns injected for the contact information. And that, then there should be another lexical, which is here, which is in a subquery for the contact table. So this is the PO vendor contacts view or table. And if that lexical here is populated with Y, then it's a true condition, otherwise it's false. So if it's not true, then this one doesn't return any data. And then this one is probably outer joint in the main query further down. So that simply the data is not accessed. You see here, it's auto joined. So that's how it works. So if we leave it blank, then it does not show the contact information. But if we populate it like this, let me just run it. I hope it's not too big. Because this one also has supplier sites. But on the test system, it's small enough, I think. Yeah, so now we should see the contact information. And we can also look at the SQL query. So in this case, if the SQL query is slightly larger, then it might be not so convenient to review it in here in the Excel file. Then you can go to the log file and there you see the whole SQL query over here. And you also see at the beginning the bind values used. So here, for example, these are the parameter values. Show context, yes, and the internal values, y. And for example, the vision operations was the parameter entered for the operating unit. And the bind variable name is uh, colon underscore and an operating underscore unit and so on. And we see now, if we look at the query, where do we see the subquery? Here, this one, you see the show context. So it inserts the character Y and then this one is a true condition. And then it adds these additional context columns as well. If the user selects uh, that parameter value. And you can also see these columns on the on here, here. Ah, that's also something which I don't, did not show yet. So we have two lexicals for the same parameter. So the parameter name is show contacts, but we have two different lexicals. So the first one is show contacts, this one here, ampersand show contacts. Second one is ampersand contacts columns. So this part is inserted in the um, in this lexical, and this one is inserted into the columns lexical. So you can have the same. Uh, parameter with different SQL injections in different positions. And you would do that by having the same parameter name and but only the first one, first record would have the display sequence and the other ones would not have a dis display sequence. You could also insert one more and then you could reference a different anchor here and then you could have, let's say here, yeah, well, this one, and then you could have a different SQL text for that. So that's how you can use different uh, SQL text for the same parameter in different positions. So let me go back to the test report because it's a little bit simpler. And here, what I did not explain yet was the different types of list of values. And okay, uh, first, uh, uh, regarding these parameters, there's one, one more thing to explain. So we also have a matching value column here. So you could have how do I explain this? So you could have for the same parameter value, you could have a requirement to insert different SQL text depending on which value the user has selected. And let me see if I can find an example report. I think the AP invoices and lines would be an example like that. Yeah, this is good. So this one has supplier invoice, supplier line data and supplier invoice distribution line data. And the user, when we run it, they have a parameter. Just click on run a parameter called display level. And that one has three different levels, headers, lines and lines and distributions. And then depending on which level the user chooses, it inserts different SQL text into these lexicals here. So you see here we have display level is sequence 40. So only one of them has a display sequence. The other ones are null, null display sequence, but have different lexicals referenced. And these lexicals, they are then in the main SQL. So here, for example, 
Uh, here we have, this one is a more complex example. So we have probably, let me see if I can find the lexicals. So here's one for the aging buckets. Here's invoice detailed column, for example. And then we have DFF columns, distribution, segment columns, aging buckets, and so on. And here, for example, a parameter that decides if we want to show the distribution data or not, and so on. And how this works is, I want to explain the matching value. So here we have all these different lexicals and the SQL text that goes in here. For example, this one is invo invoice detail columns. And the SQL text is the text for all the, the details from the line level. You see here, I oh, know this is probably, this is still on the header level, it seems. Yeah, I'm not sure, might also be on, oh, we can look at the right hand side. No, this is line level already. Because here on the right hand side, that's how the matching value works. It works like a case statement. So if you you can reference the parameter value entered by the user, you can also click on a list of value. And then you can say, if the user enters the value lines, then you want to have this SQL text dynamically inserted. But if they enter the value lines and distributions instead, then you would like to have this longer SQL text, which also has here at the end the distribution columns. So that's how you can distinguish which SQL you would like to execute depending on which value the user chooses. And you can even use a wildcard and that means then either of those lines or lines and distribution. So that's how it works. So that's of course a little bit more complex. And you can also have dynamic SQL uh, that's for the SQL text. So for example here, the SQL text is static. So you know upfront exactly the columns for example, here the column names and so on is, is all known. But sometimes if you want to build a matrix report or if you would like to dynamically create the flex fields uh, columns or even for a chart of accounts, for example, in our finance reports, we use that dynamic SQL, then you do not know the, SQL, the columns up front. And here, for example, we have a parameter for the ledger and then we have a lexical for the distribution segment columns. And every customer has a different chart of account. And we do that by having in, in the SQL text, we have an SQL query. So it starts with select. And so everything that starts with select is executed dynamically before the actual report execution. So let me just execute this one in total. Then you understand what it does. So this one looks at the key flex field setup for your Oh, it doesn't find anything. Maybe I did not enter the right parameter or probably because it might be because I don't have the session context initialized. Yeah, maybe let me go to a more to a simpler example to the AP suppliers report. So also here we have a parameter which has a dynamic execution, which is the DFF columns one. So also here, this one, you see it starts with a select query and the select query selects from a function and this function returns us the SQL text of the flex field setup. And let me show you what that means. So if we execute this one in Toad, we have a clop returned and the clop simply returns the SQL text for the DFF setup. So here, for example, attribute 14, from the supplier table is matched to this attribute column. And then when we run the SQL query, let me just run it with that parameter set to yes. The lexical here called DFF columns in the SQL query is replaced with that, yeah, this one here, column F. So this one is the, the DFF that we dynamically insert. So we can also look at the SQL query in a log file here. And then we should find that lexic, uh, that attribute. So here you see this one, this is the dynamic column. So this one is the result, APS attribute 14. This is the dynamic part. And that comes from the output of this SQL query, which is executed 
dynamically before the actual report is executed. And the original SQL query had only the placeholder called TFF columns. So that's also possible. And if you need to see examples, you can uh, use these existing Blitz reports and then you can see how it's doing it. And yeah. Okay, what else is there? Then a the different list of value types. So we have uh, here list of values. We have list of value from Blitz report, list of value custom and list of value Oracle. Let me go back to our test report, this one here. Because here we can modify it without modifying our standard reports. So we have these different types and we can, for example, instead of using our custom, uh, our Blitz report list of value types, which are the first two, we can also use an Oracle standard list of value types. So we can uh, choose LOV Oracle and then it shows a list of all the value sets in Oracle. And we for sure have a value set for the suppliers or vendors. Let's see, vendor name, maybe this one. Also here you see a usage column and that shows how often that value set is used in Blitz report already. So this one is a popular one. It was used 21 times. So let's choose this one. And then we can review the SQL query. So we can click on the LOV query here. And this is also the reason why we created our own Blitz report list of values because there's not so much flexibility. So here, for example, we cannot modify the list of value query and also the size is very limited. And for that reason, we have created our own types. And also because if you want to modify the definition of this query, you would need to go to the Oracle standard value set and then modify it there. And that's not so convenient and there's more limitations. And for that reason, we have invented our own type. So we can now switch instead of using LV Oracle, we could switch it to LV custom and then it keeps the same query, but uses now the Blitz report uh, list of value type. And then we can modify the query, for example, or we could also modify here these parameters, validate from list and filter before display. So it's also important to explain how these work, but let me first show you a little bit about these, the query, because the list of values, they always need two columns. One is called value and one, the second one is description. So that's the, the required columns. And then you could have an optional ID column at the beginning, but then one, that one is optional. So if you don't have it, then the, the value from the value column here, this one, in this case, the vendor name is returned to the SQL query here to the bind that we have in here. But if we use an ID column at the beginning, like this one had, like this, and the ID column needs to, be for the, needs to be directly before the value column. So that's also a restriction. So it's not allowed to add it to the end, it needs to be before the value column. But so if we have an ID column, that means now that if we run this query and restrict that parameter, the vendor ID would be returned into this bind. That means this one would no longer work. So we could do it like this then instead. Vendor ID instead of vendor name, and then it should still work. Let's say Shriam Healthcare, I think had invoices. Yeah, you see, it still works. And if we then look at the SQL, so yeah, it's just our work loss is injected like that. So that is the LOV custom type and LOV custom means that we don't have a reusable name. So it's only this list of value query is now only used in this specific report. So we can modify it and it doesn't affect anything else, but it can also not be reused easily. If we want to reuse it as a different for different reports or different parameters, we can click on this button and then we can create our standard list of value type from it. And then we could say supplier test list of value like that. And then we could use it in different reports as well. And uh, let me for now, let me choose the previous one, AP supplier. So this is our standard one. You see it's used 47 times. Let me choose this one again and switch it back to vendor name so that it still works. So there's one more thing to show, which is these two checkboxes. There's one which is called validate from list and filter before display. And maybe I start with 
the second one. So the second one is for performance. So for large list of values, we would need to set a filter before display because if we don't have it set, let me uncheck it and then run it. So at this moment, when we open the Blitz report form already, in the back end, it would already execute that list of value query. And that might be very large. So if you have a larger transaction data set, it might not even complete or even your form might run out of memory and then it could show uh, an error message, cannot show a list of value or it might even crash with out of memory. And to prevent that, we would need to set the filter before display. But the difference is, so, so right now, it's more convenient. So if the list of value is small enough, you should have this setting off, this filter before display off because it's more user friendly. Because that means, because it's loaded in the backend already, you can just double click on the supplier name and it brings up the list of value like this and they can enter value or they can stop typing. So if you type character A and tap, then they can directly select one of these values. And that's more convenient because if you have that filter on, so that is better for performance because now when we open a Blitz report form. In this case, it would not have executed the query yet. It would only execute a query once we enter a parameter value here and then click on the list of values. So if we double click now, we have this pop-up screen which said, says, please enter a value to limit the list because it might be large. And then we can enter a value and then, and now the query at this moment, the query is executed. And that's much better for performance but it's not so convenient because, uh, yeah, it's basically, it doesn't allow this double click. So that's the main difference. And then there's also, now that I've changed this checkbox, so if I change it like this, we need to be a little bit careful because this is now a shared list of values. So it's not only used in this specific report, it's also used in different reports. And that's what we can see behind this use by button. So we can click on the button and then it shows a list of all the reports which or report parameters which are using this list of value. And we can also directly navigate to there. For example, here the invoice payments report in the supplier parameters using that list of value. So we can click on it and we navigate directly to that report and to the supplier parameter so that we can see where it is used. And if you want to navigate back to our test report, we can also do it like this and then use it to navigate back. There's also, in addition to this use by navigation, there's also full text search. So if you w would like to find all the supplier lists of values and you know the table name, let's say AP suppliers. So you can, for example, enter a table name and then it shows you all the list of values that have that table name. And then you can easily find existing lists of values to avoid duplication, for example. And so that was the, the use by button and the filter before display. Now the validate from list. So that checkbox defines if you are allowed to use wildcards or not, because now when the checkbox is on, if we type a character A, for example, we have to, it forces us to select just one value, one valid value. And so we cannot use a wildcard. We cannot do something like this, for example. If we would like to allow a wildcard, for example, we would like to use instead of an equal sign, we would like to use a like condition and maybe even make it case insensitive. So up here, vendor name like up here of the bind. And then we would also probably say supplier like so that the users understand that this is a, this allows wildcards. Then oh, we need to change the checkbox as well. So then we would change the checkbox here. And now if I want to avoid changing the standard definition from our list of value, I could, for example, switch it to custom first. And now it's no longer affecting the standard list of value because now it's only for this specific parameter. And now I'm unchecking it so, so that you see the difference. So now we could, for example, say 8%. And then it finds all the invoices from suppliers starting with 8%. Let me also close the log files here. Where is the output file? Here. So you see, these are all the invoices from suppliers starting with 8%. And yeah, so it allows you to use wildcards, but you can still use the list of value, for example, like this. So that still works. And you can also do tricks like, for example, A% percent and B%. Percent. If you use, I, we need to check the multiple values. So 
So you can do something like this. And Blitzyport now automatically converts to like uh, comparison into an or colors. So for example, you have suppliers with A and you also have suppliers with B, as you see here. And if we look at the SQL query, maybe in here, Yes, you see we have instead of the, the initial where clause, we now have an org condition. So that's what Blitz Report does automatically. So if you use the multiple values, it converts your SQL query text into a condition that um, applies that multiple values condition. Okay, so that's the different uh, checkboxes validate from list filter before display. Then there's one more thing to show and that is dependencies. So we have dependencies for list of values and for default values. So you can here, you see it also in this list of value already. We have dependencies because they start with colon, dollar, flex dollar, then a period, and then the parameter name or list of value name. So that's the same syntax that Oracle uses, this colon, dollar, flex dollar, to reference other parameters. In this case, let me just make it bigger so that we can see it. So we have a where clause that says the operating unit parameter is either null or if it's not null, so if the operating unit parameter is populated, then the vendor ID must be in the supplier sites in that operating unit. And now we don't have an operating unit parameter, so that's why it shows all the suppliers, but we could add an operating unit parameter, but before that, we need to add it into the query. So let's do that here. Let's say the operating unit table and the organization ID equals the organization ID from, oh no, from the invoices. The organization ID of the invoices. Okay, that should work. And let's insert this back into our Blitz report. And now we need a parameter, so I don't want to type it, so let me just enter it from here by double clicking it and operating units operating units so we have many operating units in other reports already so we can just copy for example this one because the where clause looks okay and we would like to see it in at the beginning position five so when we run it like this now we only see the suppliers from the so you see it's 261 from the vision operations operating unit and if we use let me choose a different operating unit we have one vision services should hopefully also have suppliers yes now we see different suppliers you see now we only see 44 suppliers so that's how that works and there's one more trick with the dependencies we can even use multiple values, vision services, and let's say vision operations at the same time. And now the supplier names should be the combination. You see it's 269, which are all the suppliers in both operating units combined. And we do that, Oracle Standard cannot do that, but we have a trick we use, for example, if we look at the supplier list of value here, we use a contains, and then we put it in total, and it's probably easier to see. So we use a contains function here. So instead of using an equal sign, so the equal sign would be, let me show you the example with the equal sign, would be restricting that the operating unit name must be equal to the operating unit name of the operating unit parameter. But, but this would only work for one operating unit. But if we have, like in this case, that I was just running, let's say we have multiple values and we select vision services as well, then we have a semicolon separated string. So we have vision operations, semicolon, vision services. And then this where clause simply using the equal sign would no longer work because it's this one, the operating unit name does not equal that string because this one simply holds the whole string. And for that reason, we have a contains function. So we can use this utility function and can also look inside. So it's basically, it's a regex functionality. So you see it does, a, where is it here? Regex like. And uh, so it goes through the whole string and then compares every element with the operating unit name. And then even this multiple values functionality works with dependencies. 
So that's how you can use dependencies in list of values and you can also use them in the default values. So here, for example, we have a dependency of the second invoice date to parameter on the invoice date from. So if the user enters, let's say, 1st of January, this one already automatically populates the second, the date from, with the 31st of January. And that is also, that's the most popular, for date ranges, most popular restriction or defaulting, because users often would like to run data for one month. So I took it off now. If you enter, for example, uh, 1st of September, it is not defaulted. And if you want that default, if you have two date parameters, you can just, you see the, the second one has a list of value next to it. You can just click on it so that you don't have to type it. If you click on it, it automatically populates it with the default from the first parameter name. And you see the parameter names are referenced with an underscore instead of space. So we have here invoice date from, instead of writing invoice date from, we use an underscore instead of the space. So that's how they are referenced. You could also reference instead of the parameter name. So for example, if we have a dependency on the operating unit, instead of having the lexical, which is here, for example, instead of having the lexical referencing operating underscore unit, you could also reference HR underscore operating underscore unit, because you can also reference the list of value names. So those two things you can reference and both of them would work. And you might also have recognized the default value here it does not have, you don't need to type select this from dual. So you see this is dynamic, but you don't need to do this because Blitz report automatically understands that this is a function, this part here, and then it executes it dynamically. So you don't need to type this one from dual. So let's, let's remove it again. And you could also use something like, for example, sysdate minus 100 or 1100 and then it populates it automatically like this. So you don't need to type the whole query select from dual. But you can, of course, you can have, have if the query is more complex, you can have also a select query in there. And maybe we find an example like that. Let's look back at the AP suppliers. Let's save it. Now, also here we don't have something. Let's go back to which one? AP invoices and lines might have defaults. Yes, this one has a default. Here it has a default value. Yeah, this one is dynamic. So you can also have an, an SQL query in here. And here we have the default value. Uh, it's also just one value, but we want to have it dynamic because it should only be set if all of these, if any of these are null, basically. So that's the logic in this case. And there's one more thing now that I look at this, one more thing to show. You see this one has a display sequence of minus 10. Minus 10 means hidden. So it's anything, any parameter that you do not want to show. Like in Orca standard, you might have hidden parameters. Uh, that would have a negative display sequence. So you see the distribution selection criteria, if we click on run, is not shown because the first parameter will be the ledger name, you see like this here. So that's how the negative display sequences work. And if you leave the display sequence empty, that is only used if you need additional uh, where clause conditions or additional SQL text for the same parameter name. So that's a different functionality. So that's not to hide parameters. So to hide parameters, you would have a negative display sequence and to have additional SQL text in different SQL positions, you have the additional records here without the display sequence and the first one would have the display sequence. So that's the difference. That is almost everything to show. There's one more small detail which might be useful. So let me go back to the test report. So here, if you enter parameters and you enter parameters in between, let's say you have another parameter and so on. So you might run eventually out of display sequences here. So if you enter more, you see here it automatically defaults the this number 16 and so on. But if we would now add four more, uh, three more display, uh, three more parameters in between, then the sequence range no longer fits because there's no gap anymore. And for that, we have a functionality here in the menu, tools, resequence parameters, 
and then you can move them onto equal distance on uh, distance of 10 again. So that's useful if you run out of space there and want to resequence it. Okay, that was the introduction to the parameter details and uh, how the list of values and default values work. Thanks for watching.